Facing challenges and overcoming setbacks is part of doing business. Whether you have the expertise to survive them or not could mean the difference between success or failure. Welcome to We Are Women, featuring revealing conversations that provide invaluable insights into the success secrets of female masterminds. A must listen for every entrepreneurial woman. Now here's your host, Janine Vosper. Welcome to this episode of the We Are Women podcast. I am your host, Janine Bosper, and I have with me Sandy Forster. And Sandy is a money mindset mentor for women worldwide who are ready to experience, like what, listen to this, more abundance, more prosperity, and more money in their life. Sandy went from welfare to millionaire and was featured in Oprah's Aussie Secret. Mm learn more about that she loves inspiring and empowering women to break through their blocks attract abundance and experience time and money freedom to do the things that make their heart sing her award-winning bestseller how to be wildly wealthy fast has been translated into 11 languages and listen to this it's been banned to 1.4 million people because it was too empowering it's a story there, I'm sure. She is the host of the Wildly Wealthy Women podcast and has transformed hundreds of thousands of women's lives around the world. And she lives not far from me, a little bit further north, in a tropical paradise near the beach in sunny Australia and is visited by wild kangaroos grazing on her acreage every afternoon. Welcome, Sandy. Uh, there's a few stories in there I'm sure we're going to <laughs> delve a little bit into as we oh, go thank along. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And I'm excited to to kind of get, get some inspiration out to your listeners and get them really creating success. And money's one of those things, isn't it? And people have learned, and we'll, I'm sure this is stuff that you cover, and people learn behaviours about money or beliefs about money, and then that affects everything they do for the rest of their lives until they change it. Yeah, we're kind of wired from when we're little. And unless you consciously make the decision to change things, then, yeah, you'll kind of run on autopilot the whole your whole life and wonder why you never really create or attract or live the life of your dreams but you have the power to change that so that's what I'm all about I love that I love I love the power I love having choice I, all of that fits within my ethos as as well but uh, before we get started I have to find out about uh, firstly Oprah's Aussie secret tell me about that <laughs> Okay, so most people that understand my work, which is based on the law of attraction and based on reprogramming your subconscious mind, they understand about the movie The Secret that came out. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a magazine here in Australia, I kind of remember the name of it, it one of those women's magazines, um, national magazine, they wanted to do a story on The Secret and because I that was my thing, um, they did a whole story on me and Oprah and I think it was Nicole Kidman and also Rhonda Byrne, the producer of The Secret. And, yeah, it was really cool that we did. Because um, basically Oprah herself had aired uh, some of the teachers from The Secret movie about, I think, four or five different shows on it. And mm -hmm. so yeah, Australia was keen to get in on the on the whole thing. So that's how that panned out. That's that's really cool. I remember when I watched that. I mean, what are we talking? 30, 40 years ago? How no, 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 no. It was 2016, I think. The secret. No, 2006. 2006. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's not as long ago as as, as not I that thought. long ago. <laughs> no, I remember when I sent away for and ordered a copy of it, a, a, what was a DVD then. I received two back instead. So I thought, oh, we manifested bonus. now one to give away to people. I wonder around. if you got that from me because if you want to really dive into the whole secret thing. So when The Secret first came out, they weren't allowed to air it in Australia until it, um, or they weren't allowed to sell it in Australia until it aired on TV. Right. And so um, I, I watched the trailer like a lot of people and I just thought, oh, my gosh, that is so what I teach I like I have to see it but I thought once people see this DVD they are going to really understand what the law of attraction is about so I wrote an email to through the secret website and I said I think what you're doing is amazing you're going to change billions of lives 
I'd love to send you a gift. And I got an email back from Rhonda Byrne, the producer of The Secret, saying, I never get any emails. They never come to me. Somehow yours has come to me. Yes, I'd love a present. So I sent her my book, How to Be Wildly Wealthy Fast, and I sent her my home study course, which at the time was like a, a folder, printed notes inside, CDs in plastic oh, yeah. cases. Yeah, yeah, I have a few of those still in the cupboard yeah, behind yeah. me. <laughs> so I sent her that. It was my Millionaire Mindset program. And she emailed back and said, did you watch The Secret and then write your book? And I said, no, I haven't even seen The Secret yet. So she actually shipped me a copy. I had a secret party at my house. We all watched the, the <laughs> movie. And it was like, oh, my gosh, this is like just everything that I've been teaching. Yeah. And um, anyway, as it turned out, through a, a series of different things, I asked Rhonda, well, you know, can someone please sell it in Australia? No, 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 can't do it. Um, I said, well, can somebody else sell it? Like, if you can't, can someone else? Yes, yes, someone else can sell it, but we can't. And I said, well, I just happen to have a US company. Can my US company buy it and sell it in Australia? And she said, sure. So that one idea alone, and this, this is one of the things I love to teach people. Yeah. Everyone is all about, like, if you've watched The Secret, it's all about thinking and feeling and thinking and feeling. But I think they miss the mark slightly because they don't talk about the action. action. And the action is where yeah. the magic happens. And yeah. so for me, I came up with the idea, oh, I think what they're doing is amazing. Oh, this feels great. I want to send them a gift. Mm -hmm. Now, I could have not sent that email yeah. and nothing would happen. But I, I took action. I sent the gift. And lo and behold, you know, I sent the email, sent the gift. And so she said, yeah, sure, you can you can sell it. That one idea alone made me, I think, close to $3 million wow. in less than a year. And so I was shipping to all over Australia, not just to individuals, yeah. but to stores, you know, because everyone wanted to sell it. Yeah. So I was shipping it everywhere. So, you know. Oh, I got my two copies. Thank you, Sandy. For me, yes. <laughs> we were being very generous. <laughs> But I that's the it. key, isn't it? It's 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 about um, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. That's where the real magic lays. And I think too many people think it's all about meditating and just thinking, mm -hmm. and that is powerful stuff. I mean, I do that. I teach that. But you've got to take action. When you combine it with action, that's where the magic happens. Yes, it's that, oh, you know what, I better call Sandy. And so take action and do it. Or this client that you've been working with or something something pops in your mind to do then take action and do it in that there's exactly. gold in that it, there is gold and I think quite often people think they have to know everything and have all their ducks in a row and have everything perfect before they take the action <laughs> now when I said to Rhonda yeah I'll do that I, I my US company can import did I know anything about importing a product no did I know anything about distribution of a product no. Did I know anything about, you know, uh, mass getting it out there to the world? No, I didn't know any of that, but it was just, you know, I'll do it. And I this is what I teach my students as well. We're all taught about ready, aim, fire. Mm -hmm. So ready is, you know, get yourself kind of prepared, aim, make sure everything's just right, and then fire, get going. I teach ready, fire, aim. So, yeah, get ready, come up with an idea, have a product or a business, whatever you've got. Fire, just get going and then aim, tweak it, fix it, massage it, make it better later because otherwise you'll get stuck in the whole perfectionism, procrastination thing and and I know I certainly would. Um, but when you do ready, fire, aim, you're just off and running and you can fix it up later. Yeah, I, I, I love that. that. That For me, that's that's actually how I work, you know, just go, well, sounds like a good idea. Sure, I can do that. <laughs> just go... <laughs> okay <laughs> how exactly am I going to do it no problem whatsoever I remember when I first set up my online training sales program I ran the webinar you know had about 50 people on it that that came on and you know quite a few people bought into the program I had one module out of seven nearly complete yeah and oh, look, because, well, I wanted to see whether it would sell first before yes. I went to all the trouble of doing it yeah and, but one of the people that, that bought it, she was really keen. You know, she's emailing me going, oh, you know, when's the next module ready? And oh, can I do that now? And, and I would email Kath back and I'd say, what I want you to do is, you know, you really need to embed this for the first cup. So, it, hey, there's nothing more motivating 
getting something done when it when it has to be completed. When it has to be done, when people are relying on you, when they've paid your money, when they're waiting. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm a bit the same. I think that's why quite often when I want to create a new program or course, one of the ways I've, I've done it in the past is I hold an event. Mm-hmm. So it's like hold an event, um, everyone pays to come to the event, and then I just have to make sure that, you know, the week or two prior to that, I've got the PowerPoints done, I've got the handouts done, I've got everything ready, I know what I'm going to speak about. Whereas, you know, if I was to create something first, mm. I, I'd be the same as you. I'd be running around, you know, yep. wasting time, doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not my style and, and I'm not a perfectionist. So <laughs> that works well for me as, as, as well. I like things done well, but that, that there's, and that's one of the things I talk to people about. There's no such thing as a perfectionist. What is perfect for one person may not be perfect for another. You know, what does exactly. what does a perfectionist look like? Okay, and and part of that intro too is that 1.4 billion. What country didn't let you <laughs> sell your book? <laughs> so my foreign rights agent sold the um, manuscript into China, but then the government stepped in. So once they saw it, they said. Nope, <laughs> not giving not giving that book to everyone. So yeah, in China, my book has been banned to billions and billions of people because they decided it was uh, kind of too spiritual and too empowering. Wow, that's which is bit... like there's good and bad in that. It's like, well, that's great. My book is so great, but oh, it's <laughs> sad that they won't read it. <laughs> and it is very telling, isn't it, as mm. to the mm-hmm. mindset of the people that control that country? Is mm-hmm. they don't want people to be empowered the general population well done with that though that's that's <laughs> quite amazing and 11 languages i know when people order my book you know through amazon and they've, they've come from japan or iceland or somewhere it's pretty cool isn't it when you, you receive it an is. order from somewhere it is so cool and you know what it's even cooler when i remember um going to an event over in the US. I used to love it when Mark Victor Hansen, who was the author of, or co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. Oh, yeah. So I used to love going to his events. I would fly over on a Friday afternoon from Australia. Uh, I'd leave Australia Friday morning, and because of the time Mm. difference, I'd arrive Friday afternoon, register for the event, go all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and then fly home Sunday oh, afternoon. You're crazy. <laughs> uh, I, but I used to love it because, you know, I had kids and dogs and cats, and yeah, so yeah. I couldn't stay long, but I just used to go for the event. Loved it, loved it. So yeah. I remember Mark Victor Hansen, um, what was I talking about? <laughs> the, I've got the... ADHD, so sometimes <laughs> when I get off track, it's like I'm off in the woods. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm back up going, no, I don't know, it was interesting. <laughs> it was really interesting. It was about me, you know, getting orders from books around the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I was at this event and uh, Mark Victor Hansen, I was in one of his masterminds once and he called me up on stage and you know, said, Sandy, tell everyone your experience of, um, you know, writing a book and all those sorts of things. And so I shared a little bit, went and sat back down. And then at the break, this girl came up to me and um, it was really funny because she said, I bought your book. And I said, oh, you know, how long ago? She said, I'm the one that emailed you. So a few months earlier, I had been sitting at my desk looking out through the window and at the time I was living on uh, a river uh, looking out at the river looking out at the sun shining and I got this order come through and normally every order that comes through I don't email them back but mm. this order was from somewhere like ice I think it was Iceland either Iceland okay. or somewhere really cold mm. and I emailed her back and said thank you so much for the order and I took a photo of what I was looking at and I said this is my morning how's your morning going and she said, oh, my morning does not look like that. So here's me arriving at this event up on stage. She heard me. She raced up to me and she said, that was me. I'm the one that. And it's just so amazing to think that you can write a book and then someone from the other side of the world can read that book. But because of the times we live in, you can meet in, in person and now through Zoom, you've got the ability to meet virtually basically everyone. I think we are so so blessed, so lucky to be living right here and have all this technology at our fingertips and be able to connect with people in the way that we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah most definitely. That, that's a really lo- lovely story and it does make a difference when you can connect with people who have you know, read your book and then they can come up to you and say, 
oh, loved it. It made yeah. a difference, which is yeah. which is what we do, what we do, isn't it? To make exactly. a difference. Yeah. yeah. So what got you into, you know, what what's your story? Because it said from welfare to millionaire. That's, you know, that's a big step and it's obviously. <laughs> it's a big uh, step. It's your story. <laughs> behind. Yeah. Well, I guess for me, I never had any real big dreams and aspirations when I was at school. It's like I just want to go down the beach because when I was 15, my parents moved from Victoria, which was really cold up to Queensland, beautiful and warm. And so I discovered going to the beach every weekend and I was just in love with that. So at school, no big dreams. I just wanted to leave school, go down the beach. But what I really um, found after a number of years was that I couldn't buy nice bikinis or especially nice leotards when the leotard sort of uh, exercise era came in. Mm -hmm. So I started designing and manufacturing swim and gym wear. And I had that business for many years, but oh my gosh, I was not a business person. I just, I just liked buying fabric and coming up with ideas and sewing and wearing the stuff and taking photos of the stuff. <laughs> so this business, that was the one that ended um, up, I ended up a hundred thousand dollars in debt and on welfare. And because my husband and I, because I met a boy in high school when I moved to Queensland, went out for, I don't know, I think it was um, 11 years or something, had two kids, then we split up. So here's me, a uh, hundred thousand dollars in debt on welfare. I think I was getting at the time in US dollars about seven and a half thousand dollars. So it must have been about 15 thousand Australian dollars a year <laughs> to survive on welfare that is not survivable so I was just getting further and further in debt but I just really felt like I was living the wrong life like I felt I felt like I wanted to be a millionaire and have choices and do the things that I wanted to do and have my own house and have a car that didn't leak so much when it rained a plant would grow in the back I mean I just had all these sort of dreams and desires that I wanted, but no idea how to actually achieve them. But I really got into personal development, reading books and going to any events I could. This is before there was, you know, all the online stuff. And so I was buying audio courses and didn't have enough money to go, actually go to, you know, three-day seminars and things, but I was doing what I could to really start to change my mind. And then I came across one day, it's a little inch-by-inch inch ad in the local paper. And it talked about personal development, making money, and strong work ethic. And I thought, oh, that's me. <laughs> so I bought the course, and it was based on the law of attraction. That was my first introduction to law of attraction. Before that, I knew about positive thinking, but that's kind of where it stopped. Suddenly, I understood about the law of attraction, and I understood there was a science behind it, and I understood that what you think about and what you focus on is what you can create. Like you actually have a hand in your life. You're not sort of some person just going through life, whatever happens, happens. We can actually, um, through our thoughts, through our feelings, through our actions, can create our life. Yeah. That just blew my mind. So understanding that I was $100,000 in debt and, you know, living a life that I wasn't really happy with and realizing that I could focus on, the dream house and the dream career and the dream, you know, traveling and the dream, like all the things I really wanted, focus on all that and I could begin to create that and that's exactly what happened. So, I mean, it didn't happen overnight. It's not like bingo, I understood and it all changed. But, you know, once I discovered the law of attraction, it was probably within about uh, three or four years, probably about four years, my life completely turned around and I went from welfare to millionaire. And now my absolute passion is showing other women how they can do the same because it really all starts with, you know, aligning body, mind and spirit, aligning those thoughts, those feelings and those actions and magic can happen. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's a great story that. And that law of attraction, it's, as you said, was saying before, you know, it sounds so easy. It's just, oh, I'm going to think about that car park, for example. That's the example a lot of people use it annoys my husband because I can't always find that car park too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it is it's it's more it is so much more than that isn't it it's so funny though we we travel have done a lot of travel and we were in Africa and, and everyone's going we haven't seen any leopards and my husband's now to the stage within Africa don't worry 
Janine is here. We will see what we need to see. <laughs> Everyone's going, I love what? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Like everyone understands, like the green lights in the parking spaces. I remember many years ago um, when I was first getting into the law of attraction, and I used to always, you know, in my mind, I just wanted to always, I don't know why, but I always wanted to park really close to the entrance. That's just how I would be. And I used to think about, you know, I'll always find a park, always find a park. Then when I discovered the law of attraction, it was like, oh, that's how I was doing it. I always yeah. believed I would have one. Yeah. But this one Easter, it was like, I don't know about the rest of the world and I don't know about even about the rest of Australia, but here on the Sunshine Coast, we've only got a few big shopping centres. I remember yeah. going to one of them and it was packed. Like cars were circling, 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 trying to get a car park. It was all out of control. And I just went in with my usual, oh, I'm going to get a park. But I looked and looked at all the cars and thought, oh, my gosh, it's like the day before Easter, of course, I'm not going to get a park. But because it had been so instilled in me for so many years that I always get a park, I literally drove in and then exactly as I drove in someone pulled out right at the entrance and in I went and so that was a really good uh, I guess uh, indication that even though in a moment when you don't believe something if you've believed a certain way for a very long time it can still happen now that can also happen in the negative I was if just constantly yeah. yes constantly thinking about the negative and then you think oh well this good thing's going to happen you've got to kind of undo all that negative thinking so it's not mm -hmm. like as I said you discover the law of attraction and suddenly bingo everything changes you have to work on it yes a and it is what you perceive you will project as well so that's even more so either energetically or with other people will recognize that even if you're saying positive words, if you're not feeling positive, that will be projected and that energy will be projected exactly. as well. Exactly, yeah. because our feelings are the key. You know, I know one of the things I like to teach people is how to, to use affirmations powerfully because mm. uh, a lot of people say, well, I've used affirmations and they don't work. Yeah, but, you know, you've got to understand that affirmations, they're just words. Yeah. And when you say those words, they're still just words. They don't do anything. I kind of liken it to imagine a, a big aeroplane um, out on a tarmac, a big, I don't know, Boeing 747. I don't know what's a big one, but a big one, <laughs> a really big one. And it's just sitting there. And all it is is just a big pile of steel all put together and it will do nothing without the power behind it. But you put the power behind it, it will take off end of the world, and it will take you wherever you want to go. Well, it's the same with affirmations. They are just a string of words until you put power behind them. Yeah. And when you add power, and the power is emotion, so when you add that emotion to the words, so affirmations, obviously, a string of words that are focused on something that you want to create. Mm -hmm. So when you say those words and put the emotion as if it's already a done deal, as if mm -hmm. it's already happened, that's what makes affirmations powerful. So yeah. the emotion is huge in when it comes to manifesting and attracting. Yes, yeah. No, I, I, I get that. But that's a great point is to add that emotion component and really take it into the whole body, hey? It's not just, mm -hmm. as you said, not just words. I love the analogy with the aeroplane sitting on the tarmac. That's that um, because I teach sales and speaking, I'm always saying to people, what does that look like? And mm -hmm. so you created that image for people to to see that. Which, and it's really cool. You know, if I never got my car park, I was the same with one of the big shopping centres here and I'd pull up and it would be Mother's Day weekend or just before Christmas or something and I'd get my car park. But if I didn't get it uh, for some reason, I would go, rather than going, oh, this doesn't work, I would go, well, I think someone else might have needed that today. <laughs> yeah. you know, and switch it round just so that it wasn't, it doesn't feel like a negative that it, it doesn't work. That's a really good point because too many people, when something negative happens, they then tell their best friend about it, they tell their spouse about it, they complain to their mother about it, they go on social media about it, they like they 
they put so much energy and emotion, which is what we're, we're just talking about, yeah. into that negative thing, and then they create more. They attract more, and they wonder what on earth is going wrong. It's like you, you've done exactly what you should do. When something negative happens, I always say to people, do a happy dance mm. because it means that the universe has something bigger and better in store for you. Mm. That's the way I like to reframe it. Because yeah. then you're not going to create, you know, yes, life happens and yes, you can get upset and yes, you can, you know, spend a moment mm -hmm. there, but you don't have to drag it out for hours, days, weeks. You just kind of want to compact it, get over it, move on. We we have so much um, synergy around there because that's a, one of the things I do talk to people about. How many times times have you have you told the story? How how much of a burden does it become because you've told it so many times? Just you know, let it let it go, and own it in the first instance. So he said, get into that. Oh, I'm really angry here, and blah, and then just let it go. If not because you don't need to take that anger into somebody else's world either. Uh, I've been exactly. watching. And just do not hold this against me. But it's research. It, it's just research into into personalities. And a friend of mine is a. A therapist and so the two of us we started watching this show a few years ago she led me astray <laughs> but I find that I watch what it what is it oh married at first sight oh okay <laughs> <laughs> like it's like there's trauma and and but it's watching people do exactly that and and this year there's been one person that just I'm going to dump here and I'm going to dump here and I'm going to dump here and everyone else is going to own how I feel and well, it's no wonder he didn't stay with you type of thing. It's, <laughs> it, it's, but it builds this. And someone walked into the, the room last night and they go, oh, wow, what's the energy right? There's something really going on here. You know, everyone picks up on it, doesn't it? And so yeah. people pick up on it and the universe just says, well, I'm not going there. Yeah, the universe says, this is what you're focusing on. This is where you're putting your energy. This is the conversations you're happening. This is what you're watching. This is what you're, this must be important to you. So we're going to bring you more of the same. <laughs> so it's like, no, switch what you're focusing on. Switch yeah. what you're talking about. Switch what you're thinking about to what it is you do want. And then you start to attract more of it into your life. Yeah. So is that how we attract and manifest money? Yeah, absolutely. So the the thing people need to understand is while the law of attraction may sound very woo-woo, very out there, very, you know, hippie, new age, it's actually based in quantum science, quantum physics. And the, one of the ways I like to explain it to people so it kind of makes more sense and so you don't sort of think it's some, you know, new age thing is our brain has a conscious and a subconscious, okay? And the conscious mind is aware of, everything is going on. The subconscious mind is taking it all in. It's aware of everything, absolutely everything. However, if our conscious mind had to actually process everything that's going on in our world, day to day, uh, hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second, it would it'd just explode. So for instance, if I, if someone said to me, well, Sandy, what can you see right now? Well, I'd say, oh, I can see a computer and I can see a table and I can see a window and I can see curtains and I can see a ceiling and a fan and I can see oh outside I can see the barley hut and a swimming pool and a day bed and see a plant and I can see a chimes and one of those peacock chairs and there's uh, the birds and I can see lots of trees and lots of different ferns and and if I was just to focus on the tree I could say well I can see a tree and it's got branches and there's yellow and there's green and there's brown and there's some bits that are dying, some bits are new, there's flowers coming out, there's cobwebs. Like I could go on and on and mm. on and on. You get the picture. Mm. So our brain can't process all of that. So to ensure that our brain just continues going on along nicely without having a massive explosion, we have a little gateway called the reticular activating system. Just I love the RAS. Yeah, RAS yeah. is amazing. Yeah. And it <laughs> closes and opens. And so it basically what it does is filters out everything that isn't important to us so that we only see and experience what is important. Now, what people don't understand is how do you train your RAS as to what is important that you'll see and then filter everything else out right. by your conversations, by what you think about, by what you read, by what you watch, by like 
everything that you put your energy and focus on. You're telling your reticular activating system, these are the things that are important to me. Filter that down into the subconscious. So when everything's going in, the subconscious says, here you are, here you go, here you go. And it comes to the conscious mind and you see it all. So how does that relate to money? Well, if you're having conversations with people about how broke you are, how you got a huge bill about this, and then comparing, oh, well, you got a big bill about that. My big bill about this came and like going on and on about how the economy is bad and business is bad and blah, 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 blah. What happens is the reticular activating system says, oh, everything about not having money, being money challenged, about big bills, this is all so important to Sandy. So what I want you to do is it all goes into the subconscious. I want you subconscious to tell Sandy's conscious mind every time something happens in her world that is going to help her to experience the same things, money challenges, uh, big bills, you know, everything bad about money. And then you wonder why your life doesn't change, but you get the, uh, the chance to change that by instead focusing on your dreams, your goals, your desires. For me, it was having a house that I owned that someone couldn't kick me out of, having a car that was reliable and dry, being able to travel the world, being able to go to all the seminars I wanted or health retreats, being able to go to the gym every week, uh, buying fresh flowers, like all the things that made my heart sing, focusing on all that, looking at um, pictures of that, uh, talking to others about that, creating affirmations around that, telling my subconscious that this is what's important. So then it would all come to my conscious awareness. And then you have to understand that all those things were there all along. All the things that would help me create the abundance, attract money, um, create a business that I totally loved. It was all there all along. But before my subconscious was like, nope. That is not important to Sandy. What's important to Sandy is money challenges, having lots of bills, like really not being able to do all the things she wanted. But when I reprogrammed my subconscious mind through opening the reticular activating system and saying what was important, then that was what I began to experience in my life. And that's how you can get more money. Yeah, and it is it is just so powerful when you do that. And, you know, an example that I give with the RAS, you know, if you do start looking for a particular car you know you you may never have seen that car on the road ever before or you and then until you buy it and then you realize they're just everywhere yeah it exactly becomes part of your conscious yeah exactly and yeah. there's that emotion attached because mm -hmm. you know when you're thinking about a car you want to to buy there's that excitement and that's anticipation and then and then even before you buy it it's all those feelings those feelings generate that you know opening the reticular activating system the, the information going in and like you say you're out on the road and the car's everywhere and it's like how come everyone's buying this car now that i want to buy it? <laughs> yeah. it was there all along but it was being filtered out now it's important it's being filtered in i know yeah i remember talking to my sister years ago and i and we were shopping for cars and i had a conversation with her while we we're out shopping for cars and she said oh i love this this car and i can't think what it what even is now Oh, Murano, and it's Murano. And um, I said, never heard of it. And she said, oh, I just absolutely love it. So we went and looked at it and went, oh, yeah, I really love it. And then driving home, we're going, oh, there's one. And there's one. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was, yay, <laughs> thank you. All right, I got the message. Yeah. <laughs> that looks yep, like that'll be the works. car we need. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. it's, um, it is so incredibly powerful. And, and, and you know, just that exact explanation with the conscious mind exploding if we did try and focus on on everything and and that's I think and you know I don't understand it fully but I think a lot of that is where people with on spectrum their brain brings in too much stuff yeah. that there isn't yeah. that that barrier to protect their brain to stop everything coming in so there's sensory overload yes and it's and it's really affects their ca capacity to appreciate, appreciate the things around them and they yeah. you know, pull yeah. back on things as well totally. yeah which I hadn't thought about that before but that does make it a whole lot of a whole lot of sense and mm -hmm. you know the last three years we've been bombarded with with media and information stories and things like that are just going to make us go oh okay yeah. uh, should I be scared and that's why that's why doing really simple little things 
like going out in nature. Like I get up in the morning, I, I wake naturally around four o'clock and then I get up, take the dog, we go for a walk along the beach and just doing things like that allows your, it's almost like your brain to defrag, allows your body to reset. And that's another thing that's so important for manifesting. I mean, I mean, I've got so much I could tell you, but let me think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what you need to understand is when it comes to consciously manifesting, consciously attracting what you want, it's hard to do when your nervous system is like all brazzly and and mm. and you're just not in that beautiful calm space because when you're in that kind of frazzly place, you're sending out a message that is kind of like static. And so the universe or the quantum field can't pick that message up. But when you're in a a nice, calm state, you're able to consciously put out to the universe, put out to that quantum field what it is you truly desire. And things like getting back to nature and uh, meditation, anything that can get you, you know, um, breath work, ice baths, all those things that can calm the nervous system just allow you to, I always say, become a meta better manifester because you become more in control of not just your body, mind and spirit, but you become more in control of your thoughts. So you become mindful when you're thinking things or saying things that aren't supporting you to create the life that you truly want. And being mindful is the first step because until then, just whatever thought comes up, comes up and whatever you're watching, you're watching, whatever you're reading, you're reading. So becoming mindful allows you to get into that place. And yeah, it's that space of going, oh, why did I have that thought? That's an interesting thought. I wonder why yeah. that was that came through. Probably don't need that thought. But that's yeah, not something that different you thought. know to do. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Until you until you learn to do it. Because yeah. otherwise it is everything's just on autopilot. And yeah. We live totally on autopilot mm-hmm. unless we consciously make a, a different choice. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I when I was and I create my vision board as my uh, screensaver every year so I, it, every single time I turn on the computer there it is for me for me to see when I was working as a GM I at, at work I would put the next holiday the next overseas holiday the image as my screensaver and it was interesting once I'd bought the tickets I'd then change the screensaver for the for the next year you know I, I didn't <laughs> need to okay that's achieved well, it's already a to, done deal yeah, yeah let's go on to the next one but it Everything happened, and it was if I was having a really you know there's a lot of intensity in a, in a workplace like that. There's a lot of things coming through, but it would be oh that's why I'm here. <laughs> you know, this is what I want to focus on. This is what I want to achieve. Is is this I can cope with that because that's what I want. Exactly, and a lot of people need to understand that you know life is life and stuff happens, and you know you've got to have a job or a business and and they're not always the most fun and amazing things. You know, even my business, which I love, there's aspects of it like bookkeeping and stuff like that. That it just Oh, we've got so much in comments. <laughs> it just doesn't light me up. But knowing the aspects that you do enjoy and focusing on that more actually allows those things to expand in your business and in your life and understanding that, um, you know, yes, the bookkeeping may be dull and boring and, you know, I used to get a headache every time I did it. Um, <laughs> every time my bookkeeper came to, came in for the day, I would, end, I would end the day with a headache. It was just all too much. Uh, but then you understand that, you know, these things help you move forward. You've got to have all these practical things in place as well as all the wonderful metaphysical, woo-woo, spiritual things. You've got to take that those practical actions as well. And again, when you combine the two, that's when the magic happens. So you've got to get excited about the things that move you forward, even if they aren't uh, you know, the most um, sexiest things you can do. It's just a matter of taking action, doing everything you need to do, aligning body, mind and spirit, and you know, you can, as I always say, you can create magic. Yeah, yes, most most definitely. And and which I mentioned it right at the beginning about blocks about money. You know, there's you know, I the, there's adages you know, the money doesn't grow on trees. We have to work hard for our money. Those sort of things, mm-hmm. and they do stick, don't they? Oh, totally. So I remember, like my parents, they both had jobs. But we never had excess money. So you just, you know, had your job and you lived your life and that was it. 
And the man over the road, Colin Brown, he had a, what was it? I think it was a furniture store. And he was always doing things like um, putting on a, a, a renovation in addition to his house or buying a new car or going on holiday. And to my parents' mind, that was like, you know, out of the ordinary. And I remember them looking at each other one day and saying, I wonder what he's doing. Must be dealing drugs. It was like if you, I've heard if that multiple times. I know if, if you're making money, uh, there must be something underhanded about yeah. it. And so yeah. I grew up in that mindset that normal people didn't have money, and the people that had money must have been doing something wrong. And so you know, you you it's ingrained. It's it's it, you're wired that way. And then you wonder why when you go out into the world and you try and create abundance and success and more money in your life. Well, you keep self-sabotaging or it just doesn't happen because you've, you're have you already uh, wired to have less, to not have as much because that would make you one of those bad people who is doing something wrong. So there's all those blocks that we have to work through and overcome and you don't necessarily need to know your blocks to be able to release them. That's the good thing. It's not like that, you have to that's dig, handy. Yeah. dig. Yeah, you don't have to dig deep and find everything that's blocking you. But you do need to understand that it is a lifelong process so um it's just like because i used to be an aerobics instructor so it's just oh, like you decide, so did i Sandy, oh, no. yes, and i sold leotards as well oh, oh my gosh there you go we are sisters <laughs> so so um what was i saying oh yeah so when you go <laughs> when you when you're when you want to lose weight and you want to exercise so what was i saying <laughs> I don't know. Man, 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 it was a it. really good story. It was a really good story. It was about, uh, oh, <laughs> you must not interrupt me because I'm <laughs> oh, I I just had to then because I've gone, oh, gosh. You know, so. <laughs> but it was something about exercising and, uh, oh, yeah, lifelong. Okay. So what happens is just like, like you decide you want to get fit and healthy, you don't go to the gym for a month or two or three and then that's it forever and expect yourself to remain healthy and and in the future not, you know, uh, make a, the wrong choice and eat the bad food and do whatever. You've got to be mindful for the rest of your life. It's not like you're obsessed the rest of your life, but you are mindful and you take actions every day to kind of keep you on course. You know, moving the body, eating the right foods, making the right choices. It's exactly the same when it comes to manifesting money. So it's not like you discover the law of attraction and you uh, program your reticular activating system, your RAS is all ready and we're out there and we just manifest money for the rest of our life. There are blocks there and there are things that are going to come up. So every day you've got to be mindful and every day when you catch yourself off course you bring yourself back in it might be a different process it might be an exercise you do it might be just catching yourself in the moment with those thoughts but it it is a lifelong process it's not like you're done and dusted and then you're going to be a multimillionaire the rest of your life and you never have to think about it because it just magically appears <laughs> yeah I, look I really really do like that point and my when I was must have been in my 40s, early 40s. And my brother-in-law said to me, how long are you going to keep this up? Meaning the exercise, running. Running I haven't kept up. Walking is <laughs> different. But, you know, you can, it, it's, yeah, when, when are you going to finish this? And I went, well, never. You know, <laughs> I couldn't understand. He, he was very much of the, okay, you've got fit now, that's enough. <laughs> uh, no, it just changed a lot over the years. Yeah. And, and really has changed as, as the body requires it. But it's, it, it, it was something I went, I don't, I don't understand the question. Yeah. And, and that's, what, that's what manifesting is, is yeah, all about. That's, and that's like you learn it, yeah. you learn all the processes you, and, and you may, often people have what I call beginner's luck and amazing things start to happen very quickly and they manifest all sorts of great stuff. But then it has to become a lifelong process of just, working on your money mindset if you yeah. want to become a millionaire or just be in that position where you've got financial freedom you've got choices you can do what you want you have to be mindful you have yeah. to do it on a day-to-day -day basis so, yeah. yeah yeah and committed yes yeah yeah and that it's 
I, I think it all comes back to two part of it, recognising you have a choice. It's not on autopilot, that they're, it, everything that you think is a choice if you know that you have a choice. Yeah, and sometimes we make dumb decisions, dumb oh, gosh, choices, yes. <laughs> and sometimes we make really good ones. And yeah. so it's just a matter of, again, being mindful, being aware and trying to make the good choices, the good decisions yeah. as yeah. you go through your life. And I know um, I brought it up in a previous podcast. I was out with my husband and I hurt my back and I was just in a fair bit of pain I, and and we were told we couldn't park somewhere and I just went Bleh, at the person that told me. Um, mm. And it, my husband said, why did you do that? And we drove away and I said, oh, because I'm in pain, you know, and I recognised it was not the appropriate behaviour to do. I didn't stay in that state of I really wanted that car park <laughs> now. It was just that I wasn't focused on what I was saying. And, the, and emotions come in and life piles on you when and things like that happen. But it's mm-hmm. then recognising that you don't have to stay in that space space exactly because life is life and it's never going to be perfect and things are going to happen and we've just just got to you know as you say make those choices make those decisions don't stay in the space move on there's so much more we could talk about i I can't believe the time already (laughs) (laughs) it's incredible we offer usually three big takeaways that so out of everything that we've spoken about that you want people to remember what would they be? I think the main thing people need to understand is you are the one that gets to create your life the way that you want. So that's first of all, because that alone is like really empowering, really inspiring, really exciting for most people. So you get to choose how your life is, but you have to actually take the action. So you have to reprogram your mind. You've got to focus on what it is that you truly want in your life, as opposed to focusing on what is or what has been or what you don't want understanding that it, it's not you know a 24-hour thing you don't have to focus on what you want every second of the day but just be more mindful that you're focusing on that more that of more on what you do want than what you don't want mm-hmm. and then I think the last thing is um we talked about uh being it being a lifelong process and understanding it's not a magic pill and yes things can definitely happen overnight and the money miracles that I see from the members of my programs blows my mind even but just understand that it is a lifelong process and so you know you're the one that makes those choices day in day out as to what you're going to think about how you're going to feel and what actions you take and you're the one that can create those money miracles yeah yeah most most definitely have you got a really short story about one of your clients uh yeah the one that people seem to like the most I mean we've done lots of money manifesting but the one people seem to love is I had a client who emailed me and said, you're not going to believe what happened. I um, had a... That's a really strange statement to send to you because you were going, yeah, of course. I I Well, I will believe it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So she said I had a, I think it was $97,503, like an overdraft, like a loan that she had out. She said she got a letter from the bank saying that it was forgiven, it was released, she didn't owe it. And she had a friend in the mortgage business and said, look, you know, I got this. And the lady said, oh, no, I don't think that's right. They don't do that. And But she went along to the county courthouse and found out that they hadn't indeed just released the loan. They just cancelled it. And, you know, she said it was simply because she was constantly applying all the things that I taught her, thinking a certain way, taking certain actions, and, yeah, the, the, just nice. a money miracle. So they, they're the ones that people love when um, debts, we have so many debts that are just released, disappeared, forgiven, you know, written off. It's like, yeah, we love that. <laughs> I think that's what we'll t- call title it. That's an awesome story of, the, you know, how to create money miracles. I think that's a really good, yeah. a very good title for it. Sandy, is there anything that you, I, I thought you, there was something that you wanted to mention for people listening? Yeah, absolutely. So before I finish, I just want to say, first of all, understand that, If I've been able to transform my life, anyone listening can because I dropped out of school, uh, didn't even finish high school. I had no connections. I had no money behind me, had no great skills, but I discovered the law of attraction. I embraced it and I've transformed my life and that's why I love doing what I'm doing. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. That's the number one thing I want to say. But um, just to help you on your path, just to get you started, 
I have a money manifesting bundle of audios for you, totally free. If you go to wildlywealthyfree.com, you can get that and start to reprogram your mind to manifest. That's, money. that's very generous. Thank you. And I will put that in the show notes. That people can, and I think I've got notes on it, but just reiterating wildly wealthy. Free.com. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. And I would encourage everybody to, to grab that. I think that's, <laughs> that's very, very generous. I, I just enjoyed our conversation. I can't believe the synchronicity. Me too. Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, I can. I, I, mean, I feel like I've cloned myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to be a beach girl too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wow. Oh, it's, uh, and I <laughs> left school in grade 10. So, <laughs> mm, wow. Yeah. But the again, synchronicity is, wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I've loved our conversation, Sandy. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today on the We Are Women podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And I love empowering women in any way I can. So it's been a pleasure. Yeah, wonderful. And that's another episode of the We Are Women podcast. I am Janine Bosper, your host. Remember, if you want to have a conversation and figure out how I can help you or how any of my beautiful guests might be able to help you, then book a conversation with me at janinebosper.com. Have a great day, week, month, wherever you are in the world. I look forward to you joining me on the next episode. Bye-bye for now. So, do you feel stuck in a rut in business? Visit speechperfect.com.au and download Janine's free ebook to avoid the five most common stumbling blocks women face in business. It's jam-packed full of tips to overcome the barriers that could be holding you back from the success that you dream your business will be. We would love you to leave a review of today's episode and share this podcast with other women in need of entrepreneurial inspiration. Subscribe to the next episode now and join the We Are Women community.